you through the results of all three of the by-elections, shall we? Uh, Selby and Ainsty won by Labour. And uh, you can see the results there. Kia Meva, just uh, 25 years old, 16,456 votes. Claire Holmes trailing behind 12,000. 295 votes for her. This is what the winning Labour candidate had to say. Over the past few months, speaking to hundreds of people on the doorstep, I have encountered so much hardship. Hardship made worse by 13 years of negligence and complacency from the Conservatives. Today, that changes. The people of Selby and Ainsty have made it clear they deserve public services that work and a thriving local economy. They deserve urgent support in the cost of living crisis, flood defences to protect our communities and an NHS that's fit for the future, public transport that connects us, more police on our streets and action to protect our beautiful countryside and rivers. That's what we want and that's why I'm here. Well, the Lib Dem leader, Sir Ed Davey, said the Somerton and Froome result uh, shows that his party was once again winning votes in its former West Country heartland. There was a 29 percentage point swing in that consistent, uh, constituency. Sarah Dyke winning for the Lib Dems, 21,187 votes. And uh, Faye Perbrick for the Conservatives, look at that, just on 10,000 179, so an 11,000 vote cushion for the new MP. After the result, this is what she had to say. Like so many places across the country, we have been let down and taken for granted for far too long by a tired and out-of-touch Conservative government. While families struggle to put food on the table or pay their mortgage, or simply see their GP. This government is too busy being a circus of chaos. Well, the people of Somerton and Froome have said it loud and clear tonight, enough is enough. And Rishi Sunak was spared the prospect of being the first Prime Minister since 1968 to lose three by-elections on the same day as Labour failed to secure a victory in Boris Johnson's former seat of Uxbridge and South Ryslip. Those are the results from overnight. Conservative Steve Tuckwell held on with a majority of just 495. There was a recount at one stage down from the 7,210 that uh, Boris Johnson secured back in 2019. This is what he had to say afterwards. This message from the Uxbridge and South Ryslip residents is clear. Sadiq Khan has lost Labour this election in his... <laughs> and we know that it was his damaging and costly ULES policy that lost them this election. I am humbled and proud yes. to be elected as the MP for the area in which I was born, raised and built a family in, and to represent my home is a huge honour. So let's get the thoughts of our deputy political editor, Sam Coates. Uh, we know all the results now, Sam. Uh, what's your initial impression of what happened? So there were predictions, particularly from the Conservative Party, that it would be a clean sweep of losses for them overnight. That didn't happen. Two losses, one victory in Boris Johnson's old seat of Uxbridge. But if there's one thing that strikes me more than anything else, it's that when you look at the results across all three seats, you see a swing away from the Conservatives and, to, and, and towards, uh, in two cases, the Labour Party, in one case, the Liberal Democrats, swings of a size that, if replicated in a general election, mean that the Conservatives would be out of number 10, potentially uh, with the largest party in a hung parliament, potentially with an overall majority. It's quite hard to read too much into it. But the direction of travel of British politics is once again clear. Just as it was during the local elections in May, so too really the biggest uh, picture of all, I think, is evident again uh, this morning as the sun uh, comes up. Um, of those three results, uh, you had a swing away from the Conservatives in Uxbridge, uh, but that was 6.5%, not quite enough 
uh, to uh, oust the Conservatives in Boris Johnson's old stomping ground, uh, and therefore they hang on. Clearly a big conversation inside the Labour Party about ULEZ, which is being blamed for the fact that they didn't take the seat uh, in the way that they'd been hoping. How does the Labour Party sell green issues uh, in an environment where clearly the Tories are going to come after them ever more strongly, scenting uh, some electoral advantage by doing that? You had that extraordinary further Lib Dem by-election victory down in the southwest in Somerset. Somerton uh, and Froome, uh, a 29% swing to the Liberal Democrats. They're very good at doing that when they can pour all of their resources into one seat. Can you do that at a general election? Well, that'll be the question uh, for next year. And then that record-breaking result up in Yorkshire, uh, 20 minutes away from York, is the Selby constituency, Selby and Ainsty. Now, that uh, basically 20,000 Tory voters stayed at home. Uh, you saw uh, the largest ever majority since the Second World War overturned. Uh, so breaking records there uh, for uh, Labour to elect uh, its first ever MP for that seat. That is the thing that the Labour Party will point to. Does lots of Tory voters staying at home mean that that seat is in the bag at the next year's general election? Well, it's too early to say. But, but I think the record-breaking uh, nature of that triumph, uh, overturning uh, a hurdle that high, is something that Labour are going to spend want to spend quite a lot of time d uh, dwelling on. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Sam, thank you uh, very much for the moment. Well, our political correspondents have been uh, at all three constituencies uh, for the build-up and the declarations as well. Let's go to Liz Bates in Selby in North Yorkshire first. And uh, Liz, as Sam was saying there, Labour certainly smashed the Conservatives' majority. Oh, absolutely. And um, look, this scene doesn't look like much now, a kind of empty car park, empty leisure centre. But what happened here overnight was a hugely significant moment uh, for the Labour Party, a victory that not even uh, the most positive uh, Labour activists were predicting in the end. They needed an 18% swing to take this seat. They got a 23.7% swing, a 4,000 majority, and that makes uh, Keir Mather the first ever uh, in this constituency Labour MP. He is very young. He's 25. That will make him the baby of the House, the youngest MP uh, in the House of Commons. Um, a, a massive achievement for the party, overturning a 20,000 uh, majority, the first time that they have ever achieved that in a by-election. Uh, the Conservatives saying that this is midterm blues, but I think uh, it's quite clear that it's, it's more than that. In terms of how both parties, I think, will be feeling in the wake of this result, for the Labour Party... I think they will be starting to really believe that the clear leads that they are seeing in the national polls can be converted into votes uh, when it comes to by-elections, but also in a general election, they will be starting to believe that they really can uh, believe in those polls and potentially form a government. For the Conservatives, they'll be playing this down publicly, but I think behind the scenes, they will be really worried about this result, not least because of the makeup of this constituency. Parts of it are real traditional uh, Tory strongholds, the kind of leafy uh, villages of this constituency, but there are other areas where there were some of those kind of 2019, more like red wall uh, voters, that join the party because of Brexit and because of Boris Johnson. If they are losing support in both of those areas, they will be thinking, how on earth do they rebuild after this result? And that's something that they'll be thinking about for certainly weeks and probably months to come. But in terms of uh, this constituency, this result, I think what we're expecting this morning is for the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, to come up to this area to celebrate the, celebrate this victory, putting to one side the fact that he's still not particularly popular on the doorstep, people still willing to vote for the party uh, in spite of their uh, feelings towards him. He will be thinking a win is a win and he'll be celebrating it this morning. OK, Liz, thank you very much. Our political correspondent, Amanda Acas, is in. So the Bath and West showground, where I'm standing now, will soon be going back to its regular use for parading cattle. Um, but just before midnight, there were scenes of real drama here as the Liberal Democrats decided to announce live on Sky News that they were confident enough of victory to declare that they'd won before all of the ballot boxes had even arrived here to be counted because their activists had seen enough of the papers being very 
verified to be sure that they had managed to overturn the 19,000 strong Conservative majority. And then around three hours later, we had the confirmation. Sarah Dyke, their candidate, a local councillor, member of a farming family who'd been here for generations, had won with a majority of 11,000 and a massive swing of 29%. Now, she gave quite a passionate, emotional speech in which she said she'd given everything to this campaign. She thanked voters, particularly those who'd previously voted for other parties, for trusting her with their votes, and said it was down to the Tories being tired and worn out and out of touch. Now, that may be the case, but the circumstances of this by-election were quite particular. Um, it was called because of the resignation of the Tory MP David Warburton, who really was mired in scandal. He'd admitted taking cocaine. Um, he was accused of sexual harassment of two women, which he denied. Um, and so many Conservative activists I spoke to tonight said that was the reason that they lost so badly because when they knocked on the doors of traditional Tory voters, they said they weren't going to come out and vote. They were fed up. They felt let down by his behaviour. Having said that, traditionally, this is a seat which has been Liberal Democrat before. So David Warburton won it in 2015 in that big swing away from the Liberal Democrats after the coalition era. But the 18 years previously, it had been a Liberal Democrat seat. And in recent years, particularly council elections here in Somerset last year, Lib Dems did make quite big gains. And the party here are really celebrating, saying this is their fourth by-election win in similar circumstances since the last general election in 2019. This they say that this shows they're winning back voters, rebuilding their strongholds, particularly in places like this in the southwest, which traditionally uh, they have uh, had a strong presence at. Uh, the Liberal Democrat Christi uh, MP Christine Jardine was here earlier. She told me um, that Tory MPs across the country will be looking at this result and they'll be scared. OK, Amanda in Shepton Mallet, thank you very much. And finally, let's go to Sky's chief political correspondent, John Craig. He's in Ryslip, Boris Johnson's former constituency. It's there that the Conservatives are celebrating a narrow win, John. Yes, just under 500 votes, the majority. It was always going to be uh, the Tories' hope to referendum on the uh, controversial ULES policy of Sadiq Khan, London's Labour mayor, charging people with older diesel cars and vans £12.50 a day to drive them in outer boroughs like this. And uh, it has backfired spectacularly for Labour. It's killing Labour votes in the suburbs. We now have proof of that. Now, uh, when I arrived here, here shortly before the polls closed last night, a senior local government uh, official with no act, political axe to grind, I asked her how, uh, how he thought the campaign had gone. He said to me, well, the Labour Party initially thought they were going to win this by-election comfortably. They totally underestimated the unpopularity of the ULES policy. And when he made his speech, uh, 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 when he claimed uh, celebrated victory, uh, the Tory candidate uh, uh, just launched into an attack on, uh, on, uh, on, on the ULES policy and said it was uh, Sadiq Khan who'd lost the election for Labour. Um, when I spoke to uh, an MP, the MP for the next door seat, that's David Simmons, he's MP for Ricelip and uh, Northwood and Pinner. He was saying this is going to have major implications for politics across London because uh, a lot of those Labour MPs who are already furious about you, Lev, Les, are going to step up their campaign against it. And those Tories in the suburbs who've been fretting about losing their seats now can see some hope. And then, of course, it's the London mayoral elections uh, uh, next year. Sadiq Khan has got plenty to worry about now, even though the Tories have picked a virtually un virtual unknown in Susan Hall to stand against him. What if Jeremy Corbyn stands, splits the left vote? But the inquest in Labour is already underway. Steve Reid, who is the shadow uh, justice secretary, was running this campaign, has said that the winning Conservative candidate said it. It was, it wasn't, if it wasn't for you, Les, he believes Labour would have won. Um, it did resonate with a lot of people, said Mr Reid. They didn't like the fact that ULES was going to cost people more to drive around at a time when there's a cost of living crisis going on. That's what Danny Beals, the Labour candidate, was saying. Well, in actual fact, he performed a U-turn during the campaign at a hustings chaired by our 
political correspondent Rob Powell when he said, not the right time to bring it in now, got to delay it because of the cost of living crisis. And Mr Reid said this, when the voters speak, any party that seeks to govern has to listen. So that's what Labour will be doing after this. So a pledge to listen to the voters. Well, the uh, ULEZ is going to hit White Van Man. White Van Man has certainly had his revenge here today. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.